Welcome to another Red Hunt video. Story 1. Am I the antagonist for charging my friends rent, then keeping the money for myself? This marks the beginning of my freshman year in college. When I received my acceptance, the first person I shared the news with was my uncle. We share a strong bond because he looked after me during my childhood due to my parents' hectic work schedules. While my grades were sufficient for admission, they didn't secure me any scholarships. As a result, I'll need to take out loans to cover tuition and work part-time to manage my expenses. When my uncle learned about my situation, he suggested I focus solely on my studies instead of working. However, my dad, his brother, explained that a financial situation is currently tight, and my parents can't provide as much support as they'd like. Thankfully, my uncle, who owns various investment properties, decided to buy another property near my college campus. He had the house renovated, ensuring it's completely new. He even included a bay window in the master bedroom just for me. I had the opportunity to choose the carpet and countertops, customizing the space to my liking. His intention is for me to prioritize my education and not worry about work. Instead, he proposed that I manage the property and rent out the other three bedrooms to cover my expenses. I've connected with a group of friends who are also attending the same college. Together, we worked out an arrangement. Studio apartments around campus are priced between $900 and $1,500, excluding utilities, with the higher priced ones being closer to the campus. Fortunately, my uncle's property is just one street away allowing me to walk to classes every day. I offered my friends a rate of $700 per room. If they choose to share a room, it's $350 per person per month, and we'll divide utilities equally. They were enthusiastic about the deal, and no questions were raised initially. Recently, however, one of my friends inquired about the total rent amount. I was upfront and explained the situation involving my uncle and our agreement. This disclosure backfired as my friends now view me as greedy for charging them rent and benefiting from the funds. This disagreement escalated into a major conflict, with my friends either wanting to pay nothing at all, or contribute only a small amount for utilities. I turned to my uncle, feeling overwhelmed. But he reminded me that as an adult, I must make my own decisions. He assured me he'd support whatever choice I make. I'm torn between not wanting to lose my friends and striving to avoid disappointing my family with poor academic performance. While I believed I was being fair in setting the rent, all my friends now label me as self-centered. Your uncle's encouragement to make your own decisions as an adult is wise advice. It's challenging when friends react negatively. But ultimately, your education and well-being should be your priority. If your friends can't understand or appreciate your situation, it might be worth re-evaluating the dynamics of your friendships. You've acted with honesty and integrity, and you have a supportive family member who understands your circumstances. Don't let office judgments deter you from focusing on your education and making responsible decisions for your future. Something similar occurred with an acquaintance of mine. The situation here is that they previously regarded you on an equal footing, but now they perceive you as having authority over them. This shift has positioned them as being lesser than you, and this dynamic could give rise to significant resentment. However, there's a constructive step you can take. Have an open conversation with them, saying something like, Listen, my uncle initially intended to rent out these rooms for $1,400 each. I managed to negotiate a favor with him to allow my friends to rent the rooms instead. Your goal should be to persuade them that they're receiving an incredibly advantageous arrangement. This approach offers you an opportunity to mend the situation and potentially salvage your relationships. If they're not at ease with the current setup, it might be best to have an honest conversation. Let them know that if this arrangement isn't working for them, you'd prefer they search for a different place. This way, the focus can shift away from money, and your friendship can remain intact. It's likely that they'll swiftly change their tune and express that it's not an issue and they wish to continue sharing the living space with you. It's possible they're simply using guilt to manipulate the situation. If they're unhappy with the situation, they're not obligated to stay. They have the option to rent accommodations elsewhere, and in that case, you could find other students to rent the rooms. Story 2. Am I the antagonist for giving my mom the silent treatment after I found out she was pregnant? I'll try to be as straightforward as I can. I, 20 female right parenthesis have always had a complex relationship with my mother. During my childhood, she struggled with addiction issues. What I recall from my early years with her is a cycle of living together until things deteriorated to the point where our family needed to step in. We would then move in with my family members, 
my mom would make progress only for us to move back in with her and for her to relapse, starting the cycle anew. However, since I was 13, I've been living with my uncles, who have been amazing and filled the parental role I needed. Since then, my mother hasn't asked me to live with her again. My uncles have always explained that her leaving me with them was a sign of her love, given that she recognized her disease and its impact. As you can imagine, my relationship with her has always been intricate. Nonetheless, I've consistently tried to comprehend that her actions are beyond her control. In recent months, she's been on a positive trajectory, leaving behind her past struggles. She's now living with a new boyfriend who seems genuinely supportive. Although we don't spend much time together, I aim to call her every 15 days, and my family updates me on her progress. However, last week, after a prolonged time, she initiated contact and invited me to meet up. I attempted to temper my excitement knowing her history, yet I felt a glimmer of happiness. During a meeting, she shared how her boyfriend played a pivotal role in helping her sever ties with anyone who enabled her addiction. She's committed to becoming a better person, even engaging in therapy and rehab. I expressed my happiness and inquired about the catalyst for her decision. She revealed that her boyfriend had been supportive but the main driving force was their choice to start a family. She wanted to meet me face to face to disclose her pregnancy. She conveyed her determination to be better and present as it helped her focus on recovery. It was painful for me, you know, to realize they were worth the change, but I wasn't. I opted to leave before our lunch concluded and subsequently ignored all communication attempts from her. Following the saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. However, yesterday, her boyfriend called me I answered as his number wasn't saved, and he began yelling. He criticized me, labeling me as thoughtless. He asserted that I wouldn't be involved with his family, as my mother's whereabouts were unknown, due to my attitude hindering her progress. Even my grandparents and parents are upset with me. They view me as irresponsible and lacking emotional accountability towards someone in a vulnerable state. My parents believe I didn't act wrongly, but I'm uncertain. Am I the one in the wrong here? Your mother's recent attempt to reconnect and share her progress is certainly a positive step, but it's completely understandable that you would feel conflicted and hurt, given your history together. The realization that her motivation to change seems to have stemmed from her new relationship and the desire to start a family can understandably be hurtful. Your emotions are valid, and you have every right to process them in your own way. As for her boyfriend's reaction and subsequent communication, it's unfortunate that he chose to confront you in such a hostile manner. Your reaction of distancing yourself from the situation in order to avoid unnecessary conflict is a reasonable response. You've been through a lot, and it's important to prioritize your own well-being and mental health. You're definitely not the asshole. Your actions haven't been wrong, and your attitude isn't to blame for your mother's mental state, addiction, recovery, or anything else. Considering his confident stance, you could inquire how he'd react if you were his daughter, and a new partner of your mother's treated you that way. Your emotions and your decisions regarding contact with your mother and her new family are entirely valid. I want to emphasize this point. Children, regardless of their age, aren't burdened with emotional responsibility for their parents. Your mother is absolutely and definitively not your responsibility. She failed you during your upbringing. Your family members, excluding your uncles, are enabling her continuous mistakes. Even if she manages to get her act together and starts projecting positivity, you still have no obligation whatsoever to be impressed. It's her responsibility to get clean and focus on bettering her life. However, you're not indebted to her in any way not even in terms of providing support. Her boyfriend's behavior is rude and he was her choice. This implies she might not have completely shed her negative tendencies. Prioritize your mental well-being. Your feelings are completely valid. Anyone who attempts to make you doubt that is not worth your concern. It's inappropriate for her to have another child when she's still struggling with emotional instability due to her addiction. If she can't handle your own feelings, it's concerning how she will manage the emotions of the new child who will undoubtedly have their own feelings as well. 